Cauldron over on the blue side and Rampage over on the red side. Indeed, we are. This is going to be an interesting one. We've seen a lot of interesting picks and bans over the last few days. Lots of priority putting onto the likes of the Gin in the bot lane. Seeing stuff like Jace in the top lane as well. Poppy always being pretty much an instant pick as well. So I'm curious to see what the teams try and bring out differently here today. Syndra, though, I think has been banned every single game of the tournament so far. Yeah, I can't... Uh, I think you're right. I don't think there's been an instance where she hasn't been banned. But it's a blue side ban this time. So not leaving it for Rampage to ban away. Um, it's going to be an Olaf ban as well as a Cassiopeia. It's heavily, heavily targeting the mid-champion pool of both members. Again, this has been quite, um, quite apparent in the last couple of days as well. Just um, these mid laners have been able to make such a massive impact on the game. So just reducing that champion pool is um, it's going to be very important. Absolutely is, and Aurelian Sol taken away too. We've seen him a couple of times actually, and I think both times it's been against Drovik here as well. Had it banned away against him yesterday. Seems like they're trying to carry it on today, aware that he is a very good Aurelian Sol player. Olaf taken away against Tussle. That's an interesting one because we saw him on Lee Sin yesterday quite a lot, and but imagine we may well see him on the same again today. Just didn't really carry the aggression through to the mid game after a relatively good early game. Jace also taken away. We've seen him both mid and top so far this tournament. Both used to relatively good effect. Not necessarily team carrying, but still to pretty good effect to full stop. And then Rise. We said it yesterday. We're not surprised to see this one taken away. It really excels in team environments. Yeah, it really does. That um, that realm warp is just absolutely devastating. <laughs> We've seen it a couple of times in combination with various ultimates. And it can just be such a pain. Yeah. Yeah, and that does mean the Nidalee is open and it is going to get locked away. And uh, so that's been, again, another high priority pick for some of the teams. But realistically, going up against Tussle here, who normally does go for the Lee Sims, um, it might be in a bit of an easier matchup for him. Yeah, so you'd hope anyway. But Jin, Karma taken away. We've seen that quite a few times now, actually, in the bot lane as well. It excels really well because it gives Jin the extra move speed. It gives the poke in lane. It enables him to easily get the deadly forage route down as well. So really good for ganks. And Karma also has her own CC, let's not forget. So it seems to be the thematic for this tournament so far has been how much CC can we stack together all at once. And that worked really well yesterday for a few teams. If they caught one person, chances are they weren't going to be able to get away for a good six or seven seconds. So more of the same coming through today by the looks of it. But of course, these are only the first couple of picks for each team. We can't write uh, any kind of composition off just yet. But having said that, then we see the Ash Dyer lock in. It goes back to exactly what we said. Yeah, this has just been a um, just been a staple combination of bot lane uh, champions throughout the whole tournament. Zyra just that extreme heavy damage early game. Uh, just, I, I, I was I want to say burst mage, but she's a support player as well. Um, but she, yeah, she's going to be an absolute terror to deal with in the bottom lane. I mean, we have seen Karma's being picked into the Zyra, so having the Karma pick up first and then the Zyra going through is kind of interesting because. Karma is quite, is quite, uh, am I a little bit behind? Okay. Slightly. <laughs> Slightly quite behind. Possibly. Okay. Um, or ahead. I don't know. But Probably ahead. Pro we'll sort yeah, of we'll ring game. All right. Okay. Well, brand lock in there. Wow. That's a, that's, I'm assuming that's going towards Lemon here or possibly Pupil and then Karma flex to the mid lane. They are putting a lot of eggs in Meron's basket on that gin. This is really interesting here. Bram, we haven't yet seen this tournament. We did see, of course, see him at Worlds a couple of times on support, but haven't seen him taken in the mid lane. That would be really interesting if we do see him get taken in the mid lane. I'm sure everyone would love to see a high skill Bram in the mid lane and see what he can, what magic he can work there. To wait and see, like you say, if that does end up getting flexed down to the bot lane for Pupil, and we see Karma taking the mid lane instead. I think the brand works though, obviously really nicely as a support because you can build like a Rhylize later on. You do so much damage in the late game regardless of what you seem to build. And then also it's just nice to have the poking lane. Easy procs of the spell piece edge passive. You get the stuns coming through from the searing flame as well. It's it's basically like another karma in lane without the shield and speed boost. Yeah, and just a little bit more damage as well. Uh, oh, yeah. More consistent damage at least. But that's going to be Lee Sin taken away for Tussle as well. So he's going to get his hands on that finally. But over on the other side, we do see Edward locking in the Victor for Drogovic. Now, Victor, again, has just been a, a staple mid laner in this tournament. And just really, realistically, the only strongest one left up. You obviously Cassiopeia banned already and Sol, Rise, Sintra. They're all been banned away. And the next on that line is going to be Victor. Yeah, I mean, we saw Victor, like you say, a good few times yesterday. It was pretty good as well and worked out 
okay for them. Wasn't the most exemplary mid laner, I think, until he really got rolling. I remember off the back of the uh, gank from... Well, it wasn't the gank so much, it was the pentakill that he got in the game. For the rest of the game, he'd been pretty mediocre and then just showed up at the perfect time in the fight off the back of Ku's engage. He dived in under Zac, got three, and then Ink on the victor, rolled up through three of them and chased down for the pentakill, which was fantastic. Yeah, he is one of those mages that... If you can get him uh, a stable laning phase in the early game, he just absolutely rolls off it. And no matter what kind of small incremental leads you've got, if he hits his two iron power spike, he just becomes an absolute monster in the team fight with the Rylize. But that does mean Lemon is going to take the Karma in the mid lane up against that Victor. An extremely impressive matchup for the Victor in the early game. That's really interesting. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about it either. Karma maybe we used to see an awful lot until she received a couple of nerfs and tweaks just to less than how oppressive she was but i'm just i'm not too sold i think the brand would have maybe been nice in the mid lane although it would have been shut down quite hard i imagine by the jungler in nidalee um it works okay they still get a lot like you say it's a lot of bas a lot of eggs in the basket i'll protect the gin you know the brand is there for the cc for the damage to throw alongside him too the karma gonna be good with the shields and the speed boost for the whole team arguably as well and if i know a karma if you start getting ahead it's really hard to shut her down because all you have to do is pop the shield on yourself run forward pop down the inspire to root someone and then throw a mantra q at them it's so oh. much free damage and it really hurts as well <laughs> that is not the match we're seeing by the way that was uh no. it's, it's rampage versus vega squadron are they predicting rampage is going to go through to face saigon jokers is it's that what rigs is telling us <laughs> is it is it scripted it's rigged. Possibly. We'll, we'll, we'll wait and find out. This is a best of three, though, however. So, first game on the way. We are going to step straight onto the rift. Vega Squadron over on the blue side and Rampage over on the red side. Brand, a new pick we haven't seen in support in this tournament yet. Here we have it. Let's do our time sync, shall we, while we're here? Go for it. Okay, 27, 28, 29. Yeah, oh, I am way ahead of 31. Yeah, I know. Go for it. 33, 34, 35, 36. <laughs> 37, 38, 9. There we 40. go. In sync? Just about. <laughs> we'll take it. I'm on like 45 now. There you go. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, we're good. All right. Okay. You damn these tech issues. Oh, yeah. <laughs> good morning. I mean, the PCs have to warm up as well, I suppose. Now, yeah, Brand coming up against people. the Zyra. Yeah, PC it's not too. just the people, it's the technology as well, exactly. And just put the blame solely on them. Uh, pick we haven't touched on. Top lane. Aurelia versus the Echo. That's an interesting one in itself. Now, I like the Aurelia yes, going into the late game. Um, so the late game more than mid game, sorry. When she gets the 2 3 item power spike, she's really oppressive and can bring down carries incredibly quick. And I think one of the big issues for Vega Squadron here is they don't have a proper tank. They've got the Echo who will build tanky. But when you think of Echo, you don't really define him as a tank. You think Trinity Force. You think full AP Echo melts in your face off with 1Q. You don't necessarily think he's the kind of guy that he's going to be at the front line of the fight for you, causing disruption everywhere. Sure, he can slow people down, but that's not what his main role is. He's more meant to be an assassin that's kind of inflects into this tank role, and he works nicely for like split pushing. But I think in a team fight, Irelia may well just run away with this. If Tussle does well, he'll run away with it too. And then you've got so much damage coming out of this bot lane that I think it's going to be tough for Vegas Squadron when it comes into team fights. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, they've got the CC. It's the, that's the benefit of having the Echo as well. But it's just landing it is going to be the issue. Obviously, they're going to want to get on top of Meron. He's going to be fairly mobile with the Karma. And obviously, have a nice protection with the brand as well. You see, the brand into the Zyra, I'm just thinking about it. Um, he can just destroy the plants easily. And um, I suppose that's another reason why you take these very high harass supports going into Zyra as well. Just to kind of counter it. You know, fire beats fire, that kind of thing. Fire beats fiery just plants. Li just literally. Yeah, a fiery plant. Oh, she's got the hornet skin, so a bit. Very good there, a little bit. But Meryn taking so much damage as well. This is going to be, I think, a problem in the early game, especially um, when you don't have that pressure from Tussle. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one. I'm waiting to see where Tussle makes himself known first. Like here, with him starting red side, you'd imagine him making an appearance in mid lane or on the other side. But actually, Zanzara, Zanzara here has actually finished off his double boss pretty easy. He's got a ward down oh, wow. the blue buff yeah. now, so he knows what Tussle's going to be doing, and his team will really appreciate that knowledge in terms of knowing where he's going to be. The question is now, does Nidalee capitalise on that? Does she head towards bot lane? Or does she try and go for the invade, which seems to be what she's going to go for here? Yeah, she's going to spear on to... Now, Tussle knows exactly where she is, so she doesn't know where uh, Lee Sin was. Now, she knows she he was at Wolves, right? 
but now he's just going to come in and take it. This, there's just the pressure coming out from Vegas Squadron's bottom lane, actually. Um, maybe they could have done a little bit more with that because they have got the way to push it. They have indeed. Yeah, maybe they just thought, I don't know, the Nidalee, the, the Nidalee, sorry, I think she wanted to get in and make something happen, but it was just a tough call. A top lane door already <laughs> going down. It's, it's just, just pop corrupting potions run at each other. Until absolutely, yeah. <laughs> well, back to Nidalee for a second as well there. I think she did want to invade and try and take the blue buff away, but when you spend that much time and the jungler is away, you're there. She probably thought, Lee Sin should have been here by now. He should have been doing this blue buff. I need to leave because something is very wrong. And he, she was right because, well, at the end of the day, Lee Sin was sat in the bush waiting for her. Would have been really risky to go for there. So, good call to kind of back off there by Zanzara. Doesn't want to go too deep early on. Yeah, that does mean Tussle is going to make his way towards this top side. Zanzara is actually invading the golems on the top side as well. And if you just look at the early vision coming out from Vega Squadron, they've got so oh. much of it. And that's going to be a landing, actually. Nice Q into Dash Ooh, Away. Can she close. get the execute? No, she cannot. Not Holy does manage to flash just with one auto attack gets the kill. But Tussle... Is he going to be able to get some revenge? Two flashing red health bars on the side of Vega Squadron. The spear on Nidalee does land. He knows where they both are. They knows they're here. Get some vision on the bush. Zandara trying to run away. Q is flashed. And the teleport is going to come through as well from Yatori. Oh, Nemen is no. here. Can he do it? No. That would have been a beautiful snipe if he did manage to land it. But flashed it's going to be all right. They really want this. They really do. She's going to come through. The Q does actually land. If he W's here, she might actually be able to get the kill. She does. Thunderlord's going off as well, just managed to, manages to secure that one. Well, Zanzara is just on the complete wrong side of the map there to play any defensive play. It was pretty bad overall, but they still managed to get first blood, and in the process, burnt, what, four, well, three summoners, four summoners there, maybe? And they didn't burn the least in flash, it was three in the end. So they took, they've got first blood, they took three of the enemy summoners in exchange for just one of their own. I think that's you probably say, worth on that one. It did also drag Karma away from lane, so she's currently fell down about 10 CHS here to... Drove a in the mid lane, which is nice. It's overall, I think overall it was a worth play. Yeah, with Non Holy as well, going back and get the triple starting item start. Dark Seal, Dorans, and uh, Corrupting Potion. He's going to be. He's going to be able to sustain himself quite nicely in the top lane. I'm still waiting for someone to build my Jairus. Not happened yet. Where will um, someone do it? Will he do it this game? I don't know. We'll no. see. You don't, generally you buy it because it's such a gold efficient item and it only costs 350 and the bonus AP it gets you if you start getting ahead is great. The increased healing is great. Everything about the item is just really good for the early game and okay, it might not have the health that uh, Doran's uh, Doran ring does, but it's still just really nice to take in terms of keeping yourself sustaining up in the lane. Yeah, just no one upgrading it. That's what I say, usually as well, if you buy Medjoys, then you get a massive red target painted on your forehead and oh, people yeah. are like, that guy needs to die and they'll just jump on you. It's the same reason why you don't see champions <laughs> yeah. like and uh, like Nasus, for example, in so in a rank play, it's because exactly the same thing would happen. Yeah, bid red target. That guy is going to carry the game if we don't kill him for, uh, pretty early. So let's just jump on him level three and kill him. Absolutely, absolutely. Pupil in the bottom lane. Yeah, he's had a bit of a tough time. Same with Meren. The first dragon available, Derry. Going to be a Mountain Drake. It's a good, good day. Start. The day is off to a good start. Mountain Drake, Drake no. number one. We've not had too much luck. And maybe, maybe a non holy, a non holy's luck is uh, looking to change as well. He's level six now, so he does have the ultimate available. But Yatori is also there as well. Tussle is just going to go for an ease invades. He's really aggressive on these junglers. He is. He likes to play this. And yesterday we saw him do exactly the same thing. He played quite aggressive early on, but just couldn't carry that aggression through into the mid and late game. And you compare that to someone like Yi Jin, who we saw doing that for the Sogon Jokers, and well, changed completely. He kept that going. He maintained aggression all throughout. Unfortunately, against DG, of course, didn't work out for them in the long run of things. But we do get a chance to see him play that delightful Lee Sim once again today. And I can't wait to see actually how this second series goes. Obviously, when we find out which team from this best of three will be playing against them this afternoon. Yeah, not so secretly, I do want to see Tussle go up against Yi Jin because they are both Lee players. And I want to see what team actually wants to prioritize it and how they can play against it as well in the jungle. Because it's always an interesting matchup when you've got some both players that are so good on the Lee Sin and then one of them is forced on another champion. Not oh, only though, he might be in a little bit of trouble there. Yeah, stun does come up, parallel convergence does come down. You can get the stun on Nintori here. Non Holy with that passive is really, really fast. And Tussle trying to follow. Q does land, but Pupil's oh. here as well. Nice ultimate bag, but Tussle saving the Q. Came back, kicked oh, in, kick. and Yatori is just going to pick up this kill most probably. Q in will get the kill. 
Not even needed. Equilibrium Strike does pick that one up. Beautiful save there from the Resonating Strike from Tussle to follow that one back in. Sonic Wave, I mean. Follow that one back yeah. in. Yeah. I've still got a question. What on earth a brand support is doing in top lane at 8 minutes 30, mind you. Okay, you got up there hey, and you got an assist. I don't... And to be fair, he also <laughs> forced the Echo to ultimate there, which was nice. And it worked out for I'm yeah. not saying it's a bad thing. It worked really well. But, like, but fair play for the rotation. But that was a crazy kind of abandonment there. And in fact, look at what's happening here in bot lane. There's four blue team members surrounding them here. Purple is here as well. He's actually trying to just back off the bleed. Trying to just make Sansar. Oh, sure wow. He cannot escape. That's a lot of damage already. But no, Drobovic comes in. Just destroys Meryn. Meryn even blew two summoners there. Pupil wasn't near him. Oh. Lemon. Lemon. A little bit of trouble. Oh, no. The roots do advance. The roots do lock him up. And he gets stunned up by gravity kill. People is here, though. Look at this brand damage early on. Absolutely ridiculous. And now Yatori is down in the mix as well. Non Holy is here. Lemon gets sniped out by the laser. She, he's going to flash forward as well. That's a 2v3. And Yatori is stuck in actually a 3v1 situation. He goes down. Double kill for the victor. And now Non Holy picks up another kill. Tussle going really low. Q landing oh, on. Oh, he gets the Q on the wrong target, but picks up the kill anyway. But that's actually going to be a triple kill for Drobovic this early on in the game. That's massive. It's. I'm sure you're aware of yours being a victim main yourself. It's oh, man. Really scary when you get this far ahead of the victim. He's you four get that easy zero, way clear. Derry. You can get the Rylize early. I know. This is crazy being this far ahead at this point. Really well played there. A little bit scrappy as a fight overall, to be honest. Both TPs having to come down. A bunch of summoners being burnt. But touching back on what you said at the very start of that as well. Pupil did so much damage early on. In fact, when he was facing off against Anzara up in the bot lane when they're between towers... Zanzara had to run away because Bran was doing so much damage there. It's crazy how much he can do, and he doesn't even have any AP items yet. And Bran, that is Bran's support in a nutshell. <laughs> All Bran mid lane. Just does Brand so Brand anyway. much base damage. It's just absolutely insane. And yeah, you're right. Maybe a bit of a sloppy team fight. But having Drobovic ahead is going to be really, really helpful for them. Maybe they're looking for a fight here. Drobovic, he's got his upgraded hex core at 10 minutes. Like, that's how far ahead he is. It's it's pretty insane. People doing a lot of damage, though. He's got Moby Boots as well, and that's possibly why I went for the Rome top lane. Drobovic uh, is going to be able to just suppress Lemon a little bit under his tower to start off with now. And uh, it's going to be a little bit of a problem for Lemon in the mid lane. But if they do go with the strategy of just trying to protect Meron, maybe it'll work out anyway. Definitely the hope for them anyway. They need to keep this gin alive and protected. That's kind of the whole point of this comp, I feel, that they've got so far. It is that either get in the back line and stop them jumping on your AD carry and let him open up the curtain call from afar, or keep him alive with this Karma in the mid lane. Of course, my issue with the Karma oh. in the mid lane. In fact, I like the Karma, to be fair, because here, she's, what she's doing has gone towards the Athenian Holy Grail. Of course, that got changed to be more of a support item, so it works really nicely to keep your AD carry up and alive. Yeah, just giving that those added heals later on in the game just really does help. Tussle looking for a gank on Unholy now. Unholy does have ultimate. Parallel Convergence comes down. They actually kick him out of it, but uh, he still gets stunned up. The ultimate coming through as well. Pupil trying to get the kill. High Enchanted Crystal Arrow just flies completely wide. And the bounces there from Brand's ultimate didn't actually bounce towards him again. So, non holy. He's burning alive, but he's still going to make it out of that. And uh, Drovovic did roam to the top lane as well to try and relieve some of that pressure. And Zanzara's making the most of it also. Oh, Drovovic. A little bit too Oops. far forward. Well, he just got... Uh, okay. <laughs> that was a little bit aggressive from him. Just gets absolutely melted by the brand. A little bit, but he's looking pretty good in terms of item now, of course. Got the perfect storm upgrade too. Gonna make good use of it here as well and not get caught out in places like that. But I'm sure Yatori will be appreciating that gold he's just got. He has finished Trinity Force now too. So he's yeah, gonna wow. be even scary. It looks like they're gonna rotate him down to bot lane here to go and shove this tower in. Yeah, Tussle does get locked up there. A lot of damage from the Zyra as well, but Pupil is on the side. Here oh. come the auto Stranglethorn's coming out, slowing down Pupil. Pupil has no mana. He is so squishy as well. He just falls instantly to Zanzara there. Nice little pick up using the Stranglethorns as well. That zoning tool we were talking about the other day, just so, so effective. Yatori down in the bottom lane now. No TP to answer that either. And the vision game coming out from Vega as well is just absolutely just crippling to Rampage at the moment. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Tussle's actually going to go in on this. Does get Edward Black back, but Tussle oh. just gets caught up. Maybe a little bit too aggressive. No team to follow him up. Now Yatori's in the mix as well. Zanzara does end up going down with blasting, putting a lot of DPS down in the back line. Drobovic oh. almost going down. Last shot kills him. 
but he does manage to get the return kill as well. The minions finishing him off for that kill, but Vegas Squadron, they've got two towers up and a 5k gold lead at 13 minutes. Well, that was a look at that replay. What happened there? Yeah, this is a bit of a crazy flash in from Tussle, if I remember correctly. He just flashes over and goes for the kick on Edward. I think he was hoping to then get a Q, but the exhaust came down. It was a bit of a panicky moment, yeah. and he thought, you know, maybe I shouldn't hear, and he just get himself brought down, of course. And Yutori gets himself in a bit of a mess. Zanzara goes down as well on Yutori's exit. He also falls. I'm not sure really why the gym was trying to go so kind of deep on this one. He did kind of get the kill in return, but it still wasn't the most ideal scenario for them, I don't think. No, definitely not, and uh, with that tower going down as well, it's going to be a lot of pressure in the mid and bottom lane. We'll see if they can play around that. And now, bottom lane from Vega Squadron are just going to roam top, just force this tower down. That's going to be uh, a very, very difficult game for Rampage to come back from. And Tussle, you know, he's ha he had a he had a good early game, but um, at the moment, with these towers falling, he's just uh, not been able to get the right flash kicks. I'm trying to go around here. Oof. Wow, that actually just hit the plant as well. Counter play at its finest. Coming out from Edward. I'll be hoping Hunt's for... just body blocking skills. It's, it's so <laughs> annoying. Doing a pretty good job of it so far. But let's take a step back for a second and look at what's going on in the game in general. There's 4k gold here advantage for Vega. There's currently two towers on their side, one dragon, and Rampage have yet to get either of those two on the board. 10 7 in kills. Most of the kills sat in the top lane here as well on the Aurelia. I think the Karma's doing nicely as well. She's 2-1-2, one, two, but has gone for that more supportive build. So it doesn't have a lot of AP. It's more about, like we were saying earlier on, keeping this gym big. And he's currently 0-2. Hasn't finished an item yet. They're going to have to wait much longer for this to kind of roll up. Oh, the wow. snipes are coming out as well. That Charge Chris Lara did land onto Tussle, but he does safeguard back to Pupil. The damage from there was just absolutely oppressive. And Blasting actually almost takes someone down. Unholy actually does get the oh, oh. TP in. And he does use the ult to get back. But Victor's going to be here as well. He is so oh, strong Yutori. at this point. He's going to run oh. at the tower here. Yatori's going to get logged off actually. Beautiful W coming out from Echo. That parallel convergence was perfect to set up those two kills. Pupil, the last man standing in this top side. With Lemon just farming in the mid lane. And now he's only just making his way up, Derry. Well, this is really worrying for them here. Just, it's so easy to push. Karma not being there is oh, massive. When she's all your speed, when she's the healing off the back of the Athens and Holy Grail, you need her to be in these fights. I'm going to take a little replay. Oh, no, we're not. No, we're not. No, we're not. We didn't need to see it. But yeah, two towers they got off that as well. Just unbelievable map play coming off of Vegas Squadron. They definitely looked at the replays yesterday and thought, you know what, our macro needs a little work. Uh, Let's go, let's go in hard on Rampage. And that's exactly what they're doing here so far. It's sending that lead now up even further to a 7k lead at 16 minutes. I've been pretty pleased with that so far, how this game is going. Rampage, still kind of showing the same issues as yesterday. The team play and synergy isn't quite that yet, uh, there yet. Sorry, Whether that's down to a lack of you know, synergy between the Koreans and the Japanese players may be the issue. But then they're just, just a bit shaky. They need to probably step it up and think about what else they can be doing here to... You know, stop playing so reactively. Playing reactive is what's losing them this game here. They're responding to the actions of Vega. And he's actually maybe a proactive play here, trying to get Blasting. Yeah, Blasting just goes down there. Yeah, really beautiful play there coming out from Lemon. But Drobovic is going to chase this one up. Pupil going really low. But that Mantra Inspire coming out from Karma is really going to save them. I think that's going to be the catalyst in these team fights. Lemon's going to be able to protect everybody from uh, from going down in these early skirmishes and the early part of the team fight and just protecting from the burst. And I think Lemon's going to be quite crucial in these. Yeah, he is indeed. I've got to say as well, look at Blasting here. He's 0, 1, and 10. Before dying there, he was 0, oh, 0, oh. 10. This Man. is how it feels playing it's as the AD ass. carry. Crazy. Well, no, it does cool. come out from Meron yet. Yeah, Tussle wow. yet again just disintegrating Edward, but he's actually going to get turned on. They leave the battle line completely open now. Not Holy has got his eyes on Pupil there. Drobovic as well has got his eyes on Tussle. Drobovic does get knocked back there. The kick comes through. He almost goes down there. Zanzara actually almost just managed to scrape that kill together. Just Tussle just going in over and over again in his back line with very, very little backup. And this, is the, this has been the story of this game, I feel. Maybe, like you said, the communication just not there between the Korean and Japanese players. Well, that was interesting. That was interesting. Twice yeah, yeah interesting. it's twice there that Tussle managed to catch out two members of the team. And, you know, they caught out two very easily and killed them. It was like, great, two kills. This is exactly what they need. And then get into a fight and lose two themselves. So all that work they've just done, all the resources they committed to getting those kills is now worth nothing. 
it's a real shame because, you know, it looked good for them before that. They could have said, right, let's look towards the dragon. Let's look towards getting a couple of towers down. But just off the back of losing that fight and Tussle having to try and 1v1 against Drobovic here, who's 8-2 and two on the victor, it, it just didn't work out for them in the end, unfortunately. No, it did not. And our friendly neighbourhood Ocean Drake is back once again. Yay! I think it's nice here for Rampage if they get it. <laughs> Really nice for Rampage, but at this point, yeah, I think it's true. probably gonna be Vega to take it away. Oh yeah, they're gonna start up actually right now. As soon as they said, as soon as you said that, they're just gonna uh, start that one up. And Edward yeah, actually, did he just steal away the blue? Oh no, he didn't. Lemming actually got it. That doesn't mean there's gonna be an answer in the top side. Ocean Drake does fall. Vega Squadron has got that one, but in the top side they are gonna take one tower. That's gonna be the first tower on the game on the board for Rampage. But can they make anything off this? Also is in the top side as well, and the rest of Vegas Squadron are going fine. You take our tier 1 in top, we take your tier 2 in bot lane. Good stuff overall. I think having to sacrifice the dragon there was a necessity. They did get top tower, which works out nicely for them. It gets them some more gold in the bank. But equally, if you don't then recall, rotate back off and defend your own tower, then again, it's just being negated here. This is, I think, the story of the game for Rampage, is they're making these plays and they're getting things done. But every single time they do it, it's just countered immediately and completely negated by Vega, either through a mistake from Rampage or through Vega just having oh, a really good macro play. Like. Good steal. There from downtown. Trovovic oh. actually activates the ghost there. Lemming just gets completely caught off guard. Enchanted Crystal Arrow comes through. Pinned up against that wall. They were correct. You see, he was corralling him like a sheep into that wall. So they could guarantee the arrow landing. And Meren using the ultimate to try and sway people, but the damage is just not there for him. Sansara, oh, wow. in fact, actually gets caught here. Kicked back in. Tussle. People get the kill, but now Tussle just goes in, and he just gets stuck there. This time, maybe a good play, but just not working out. Drobovic, the damage coming out from him with that Rylite is just absolutely oppressive. And Drobovic is just going to get those double buffs and go, thank you very much. I'm just going to sustain out this whole... Uh, I was going to... Sustain. He's got the red buff, I suppose. They're going to take HP regen, but uh, sustain through all his mana problems. And he's going to take the mid tower, and they're going to take the inhibitor as well. It looks like there's nothing Rampage can seemingly do. Well, it's like they heard what I said and cast about, about a minute ago. He might have a fight here, maybe. No, Holy. Having to run away here, just struggling to get away, but he is going to make it out safely. But yeah, it's like they heard what I've been saying because. I, I, I just don't get it. Again, with the lease in there going in thinking, yeah, we've got Nidalee, we can get a kill here. They got the kill, sure. But then you lost Tussle straight after him. What did that mean? You then lost your inhibitor tower. Trying to force those kind of kills just isn't worth it, I don't think. You can get a kill for free, take it, or if you can engage and you know you're going to come out on top of that fight overall, then do it. But if you're going to lose a fight like that knowing, okay, well, there's a Victor CC, there's the Ash ult, there's the um, Karma, sorry, the Zyra Exhaust, the Zyra Root, Ultimate. There's so much stuff there that was like, well, if you come in, you're not getting out of this one alive. And that's exactly what happened. So for Tussle, again, same mistakes as yesterday. Good aggression in the early game, but not using it correctly in the mid game. Either not enough or far too much. And in that case, they're probably far too much. Yeah, and we have a look at the build as well. Levin's going just all of the supportive items. <laughs> a beans are the sensor. And we might just see our Magizers. We've got 10 stacks on the Dark Seal on the top and 10 stacks in the middle. I didn't even see Drobovic pick up that Dark Seal. Now, you tend to buy it on the first back. Either, either buy it first when you, and then you take three pots of lane and have it sustained forever for days. Or you buy it on your second back when you've got the Doran's uh, ring. And then you pick up the Dark Seal afterwards. Both of them work quite nicely. It's very easy to kind of know based on how the first few minutes of the lane goes whether or not you should buy Dark Seal. Plenty of the jungler's promises, okay, I'll get involved. But here comes the curtain call. They want to try and make something here. Blasting gets caught out in the backside. Edward actually gets nice. kicked on as well. Yeah, nice kick up and follow through. But Drovovic's now in the front line there. He is going to get stunned up as well by the Aurelia. But she's almost going to go down. One more tick will do it. Oh it will God. not happen. Tussle gets caught Tussle, on the again. Tower. Again. Just gets queued. That Sheen proc doing so much work. Takes him down. Pupil in the mid lane as well. Non Holy has joined the fight. Double kill coming through for Drovovic. He didn't need any more stacks, but he's going to get him. He's maxed out that Dark Seal. And Tussle just following these cues in when seemingly doesn't need to. Well, I can't keep repeating the point now because the four of oh. death is watching at home, of course. But that's exactly what's happening right now. Meren has been caught out. Yeah, Lemon actually using the Ghost to get away. He's going to be at one speedy karma. She's actually just going to go on the aggressive now. The Victor just saw oh. so much damage. You don't want to face Drovovic right now. They do get the lock up, but Unholy on the Echo. He's pretty mobile. But yeah, this 
Lee Sin, Tussle, he's a highly high pressure juggler, likes these niddlies, these Lee Sins, but maybe they just keeps going. I, I don't know, man. That's Lee Sin drum at his finest, right? Yeah, it pretty much is, yeah. I think this is Tussle trying to force something, or like you say, the Lee Sin drum, where you see your name up in lights, you see the enemy laner dead, you go for it, and then you end up dead yourself. I think he needs to stop going for the engages because he knows, well, the victor especially knows that if that Q lands and the Lee Sin comes in, he just drops the gravity field at his feet, and that's going to be a very stunned up Lee Sin, and in that, in that case, a very dead Lee Sin. Because you're facing off against a 12 and 2 victor now who's just pitched up Lich Bane. What can you do against that? It's Ooh. so difficult to stop. His dueling potential is insane right now. <laughs> I love Lich Bane on Victor. Just does so much damage. Just, you walk up to the ADK and you you pretty much two hit them. Fantastic. Empowered auto on top of the Lich Bane. Beautiful. Why I don't Not holy. carry. Yeah, exactly. That's the same. That's what I don't because I just don't want to get one shot by the mid laner every single team fight because they just flash ult or like Victor just Q autos me. It's horrible. My Blast mechanical role. say blasting as well. 0, 2 and 13 right now. He is, he is truly taking on the role of the support of the team. He's got he's got a better oh, KD yeah. at this point than Edward, but he's on 0 4 9. Steal away there. Well, more of a defense by your Tory than a steal. Baron being started up now. Yeah. Baron is the target. He's going to get warded out. Gets quickly destroyed though. Only a blue ward. But look at the damage coming through. It's just absolutely insane from the Ash. It does get taken over, in fact. But the ultimate from Jin is going to catch up Blasting. He goes down. Lemon secures the kill. But Yatori, he might go down as well. Drobovic with the damage. Look at that Lich Bane go. Absolutely insane. And now Tussle. Oh, the burn. 1v3 situation. But the burn actually did kill Victor there. Tussle actually. Is this your time to shine, buddy? Zanzaro is really low. Non Holy is there, though. He is so, so tanky. I don't think Tussle is going to be able to kill him. No armor pen from him. Tries to get the Q on the minion. Not going to work. Non Holy finishes that one up. But Drovovic taken down really early in that fight, actually. Just almost turned that around. But still, two Baron buffs on the side of Vega Squadron. We'll see what they can do with it. Uh, four for three fight overall. Definitely not too bad. We soon you walk away with the Baron as well. And now you're sat at about 11.5k in the lead. It's looking really good for them. And there's another Ocean Drake available there. So that's a mountain and two oceans that are going to be on the side of Vega here. Assuming, of course, nothing crazy happens and Rampage don't steal it away. But surely here is Rampage. You're going to start looking towards the next game now and start thinking, what can we change here and what went seriously wrong? And number one for me is the over-aggression. We've seen it all game from Tussle going in too deep. I appreciate aggression is a way to get ahead on a lease in, especially in the early game. But when you know that someone's really fed, like this Victor, don't commit everything to try and kill him. He's two or three levels above you. He could probably melt you in two or three abilities as well. Just play it safe and try and look for the good picks onto someone like the Ash. Maybe even the Nidalee if needs be as well. Because the chance of you getting that Victor without committing everything and then getting melted when your cooldowns are up, that's going to be the time where things start going very wrong, as we've seen this game so far. Yeah, just uh, tussle with the over-aggression. They did manage to catch out Blasting last time on the Ash. Like you said, really, really supportive AD carry right now. <laughs> it's 0 3 and 16. Edward has more kills than she does. But that means she's not doing a lot of damage. Just that she does get caught a little bit often. But the defensive. I mean, the CC and everything coming out from Vega Squad. We mentioned it at the start of the game, just working wonders for them. Non Holy is going to siege up that top tower. And that inhibitor will fall in favor of Vega Squadron. The pressure coming out from them is just absolutely immense right now. It's a wonder what Rampage can actually do to make it in this uh, in this game again. Yeah, we're being sieged down by a Baron buff is never fun. Especially not when it's in two lanes and you've got super pushing down the mid lane as well. But this looks like it's, what it's going to be now is start hitting away on this bot lane tower as well. Still not taking it down just yet, mind you. But the root lands. Here comes the curtain call. Curtain call does come out. Zanzaro does get knocked straight back into the tower, but that's zoning. Zyro just does so much work. Ash picks up a kill there, and now Yatori is in a 3v1 situation. Lemon just can't get to him quick enough, but now Drobovic's going really low. Ghost pop from him. This could actually be the fight. Not only picking up two, Ash picking up another one. There's your kills on the board, buddy. You finally got some three kills for her, making it a triple kill. And I think this is the end of the game. Vega Squadron taking the first game in its best of three against Rampage. It will indeed do just that. It's looking pretty convincing for them so far. And you do start wondering, can Rampage actually hold on in this second series? Or will it be Vega going on to face the Saigon Jokers this afternoon to determine who gets that second spot? I am Zhongi. We're going into game two very soon. And let's see what gets changed up there.